<coughs> set up straight on camera. Um, good afternoon, and hi again. Welcome to episode 787. And the topic today is going to be a fun one, um, and blatant too, which is why self-love is about everybody else. And more. Um, <laughs> before I jump into that, let me introduce myself, so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping strong and successful women create balance in love, life, and business. Um, I'm a best-selling author of a book called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is a book about relationships for singles and couples, men and women, which is something I'll put a link in at the back end. I'm also going to put a link in the back end about my self-love course because this is about that in a way that may not may actually surprise you because I like surprising people. So um, part of my reason for doing working with women and why I do these talks is because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine and that inspired my talk starting over two and a half years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. Today we're episode 787. I've done a bunch of these. And the topic today again, as I said, is self -love, why self-love is about everybody else. First of all, let me talk about what self-love really is because that might give you a clue as to what I'm about. <laughs> self-love isn't some, well, let me actually, let me start the other way around. Let me tell you what self-love isn't before I jump into that. So first, what self-love isn't, then what it is, and why it helps everybody else. That should work. Yeah, that'll fit in the broadcast. So first of all, what self-love isn't is a panacea. It's not some uh, band-aid you stick on top of stuff, a thing you do just to pretend you feel okay. Self-love sounds, almost, and what self-love is also not about, is about um, stroking your ego. It's not about um, thinking you're better than other people. It's not about, um, what is self-love not about? It's not about, um, Actually, let's go into what it is about, because I'm really more passionate about what self-love really is about, not what it's not about. What self-love is about is putting yourself first in your life. Didn't think about that one, did you? Also about taking care of yourself, and I mean this from the point of view of putting yourself, again, putting yourself first, but also raising your own standards of self-care, self-respect, self-appreciation, and a bunch more. That's something else I'll talk about. Self-love is, again, it's not a panacea. It's not just like, oh, yeah, I love myself, I'm fine. It's a deep dive, really, when you do it the right way, which my offering at the back end will tell you about, to reconnect with who you are. If you're over the age of 12 or 20, <laughs> which most people watching my broadcasts are, it's quite likely that life has thrown you some curveballs. It's challenged you, you some relationships that have really come along and, hurt, and maybe hurt you, maybe disrupted your peace and quiet. Life is basically not usually a grace-filled journey for most people. And one of the casualties of that is the relationship we have with ourselves. In fact, most of the time, we're often in recovery mode or even, um, what's the word looking for? Uh, playing defense. Because life is throwing stuff at us all the time, so we're busy, like, you know, trying to survive it. Whether that's career, money, relationships, um, friendships, social environment, political things, whatever it is. A lot of times we're playing dodgeball with life in a way, hence being on the defensive. And that is challenging. It also means that we become more reactionary to life itself and to those around us. We're not usually in a place where we have self-awareness to be able to respond from a place of choice versus reacting to what's happening out there because of the way I throw things at us. When you are disciplined and, if that's the right word, when you're practiced in remembering self-love, what happens is you remove yourself from the reactivity of the world which sounds interesting to do, but you can do it. And you put yourself first, as I mentioned, and you start to raise your own um, self-support practices, which I was also dropping hints at. The reason why this benefits everybody else is because, first of all, you won't be as reactionary to other people because you're putting yourself first. But that's not really the primary thing. No, that's secondary. Primary benefits one of the other people is is you stop relying on them. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. This is gonna be a challenging one for some people to hear this, I know. But when you truly are applying self-love in your life, and so, well, 
when you apply self-love in your life, what it does, what it creates, is a sense of autonomy in your life, which means that first of all, second or third, I'm not sure which one I'm on now, what it does is create for you a place where you can trust yourself. And secondly, underneath that, is you rely upon yourself. When you trust and rely upon yourself, you tend to be more discerning about who else out in the world you give your power to. Yes, giving your power away is not a good thing. When you support yourself and you care about yourself, again, the self-love is the underlying thing through all of this, your reactivity to other people is abated because what they do doesn't matter to you as much. I'll say that one again because this is a pivot point. What other people do doesn't impact you as much because for most of us, we are so caught up in other people's um, interaction, relationship with us, and we're enmeshed with that, that when they don't look at us the right way or say the right thing or respond to what we ask for or listen to us or do what we want or all these other things, we get reactive. Now, of course, you may not do that. Maybe your friends do. But here's the thing. Whatever level or, or frequency that happens on, the price that's being paid is an is a... Um, uh, what's the word? Um, diminishment? That's not the right word exactly. But it's an ero that's a word, erosion. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> I was thinking of riverbanks. An erosion of friendship. The thing about being when you work on self-love is that all your friendships actually get better. Because by not being dependent upon them, or giving your power away, or acquiring things from your friends, your friendships are actually based on a much cleaner place. Self-love, as I said, gives you back your power in a sense. And I didn't say that, but I'm saying it now. Self-love gives you back your power because what you do is you take yourself back to yourself. What happens from that also is that people around you, one, they don't have hooks into you, or I should say they don't have you. Let me try the other way around. Your, the people around you, that you don't have your hooks into them because you don't need them. The power of self-love requires you to own who you are. So then you become interactive and interdependent. Ah, oh, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> the codependent trap that most people fall into is based upon the fact that we don't really love ourselves. Again, self-support, self-love, self-care, all the things I'm listing are components of autonomy where you don't need other people to make you feel better. You're not codependently enmeshed with those people, especially your primary relationships, be it parents, partners, siblings, children, etc. This is freedom in family dynamics, by the way. When you love yourself, what happens out there is something you get to witness, observe, and respond to versus be overwhelmed by and reactive to. It is that, dis that clear, that, that um, uh, obvious. <laughs> That's the word to use, obvious, duh. So it sounds simplistic, but self-love really affects every relationship around you. Of course, self-love is about you, or me, but also self-love is about everybody else because your interaction with everybody else changes. You'll be finding when you do when you are practicing self-love, what you'll notice is your friendships will change, and your relationships will change. Some will evolve, some will relax, some will go away, and you will make different choices. But you'll make much more self-supportive choices in your life, which may include walking away from certain relationships. This is the power and the requirement of self-love. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? <laughs> the practice of self-love isn't that complicated, but the side effects, the impact, and the way your life changes is way more complex in the sense of how much it interacts, how many, how many different areas of your life that self-love filters into. Because by having self-love as your primary focus first, hang on a second, <coughs> excuse me, will put you in a place where your choices you make in the world are predicated upon you having wiser choice about yourself. Say so another way, it didn't come out clearly. When you, when you practice, when you're disciplined in self-love, how you act in the world, what you do in the world, how you respond in the world, comes from a much healthier and more self-first place. I was gonna say self-centered because of the thing. I want to play some words here. Being self-centered when it is self-love based is a healthy, heart-centered place. 
the old frame of talking about you're self-centered is kind of the judgment because your ego is running the show. I don't mean that. In fact, the way I talk about it as self-centered is I use capital S for self, meaning the, way, the language I use is that it's the higher self, it's the, it's the more aware self, it's the more um, awakened self that responds versus ego, um, misogynistic sort of way of doing things. So, hi Sarah. Oh, thank you. This is really important information, so I'm happy you're putting, out, putting this message out in the world. It is my honor, my pleasure. This actually, by the way, came up in about four conversations this morning. I was at a guy paid this morning, and there were at least, no, there were at least four different people I was talking to. One, because two of them asked me what I was doing, what I was going on in my work. I said they're shifting more into self-love, and they're like, oh, oh, this is good stuff. So it became reinforced today that I need to talk about this. So thank you for the added um, reflection. So thank you, Sarah. I look forward to talking to you on Wednesday. Maybe this will be, maybe this will be part of our conversation on Wednesday. We'll see. Um, back in gear. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is actually a Facebook Live first, which is why you're wondering who I'm talking to on screen. So it's Facebook Live, and I'll give you all the links at the back end. Yes, it is essential, absolutely. So, um, yeah. So getting back on track. Self-love is a simple practice or it can be a simple practice, yet it is so profoundly powerful in your life. Again, I mentioned at the beginning, and I'll put it at the back end, I'll put, I'll put some links in the comments um, for my self-love guided meditation because it started out as something I gave away as a simple practice, but then I decided to do audio meditations because it's easier to do the practice. We don't have to read at the same time you're doing it because it's a mirror exercise. But this, this, this simple um, um, approach impacts so much as I already mentioned. And it isn't just your life that changes. It's everybody around you whose life gets impacted by the way you change. If you found yourself being in places where you're continually the ping pong ball of your friendships, and you're in a place where how things happen to your friends or do or don't have to your friends affects you directly, this is where the self-love centered approach changes it. Because when you do that, it removes the elastic band rubber, um, ping pong experience you have with your friendships, and especially your primary relationships, as I mentioned. Self-love will change the way you parent, it will, it will change the way you date, it will change the way that you relate to anybody around you. Because when you learn how to love yourself first, whatever happens to other people becomes something you can respond to versus react to. And the difference between response and reaction is huge in people's lives. Most people are reaction-driven. Hi, Bliss. Uh, yes, this is seven, episode 787. Yes, I, I, I number them to keep track because I don't know otherwise. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what can I say? I have an addiction, maybe. No, I have, I have a service and a, and a purpose and a drive to serve. I actually had a friend of mine tell me this morning, I actually love my broadcast yesterday. Even though I thought yesterday was a bit of a... It was actually... He said it was very calm. I was trying to make it a rant. It didn't come out that way. It was actually just very, very... Um, I was talking about gender bashing yesterday. That was a whole different topic than this one. But getting back to this topic, to finish, to complete. <laughs> the self-love focus I talk about a lot, and it's a primary part of my work. It's been my, in my work since I started because when I was talking about relationship coaching for my clients and my, for women, it always came back to self-love first. Because every one of my clients, thank you, Sarah. Yes, I am committed. <laughs> um, every one of my clients, it was always the key to have them have what they want in a relationship. I had to help them learn to love, it, love themselves first because so many people walk around wounded thinking that when they get the next relationship, it'll fix that. And that's another trap, by the way. When you're looking to, for the perfect person to make you feel better because you don't feel good, error in approach. If you're looking for that person to lift you up, to, to inspire you, to help you take you to your next level in life, don't put that, that, that block, um, pile of bricks on that person. First of all, it's not good for them to do that. Secondly, it puts you in a massively codependent place, as I've talked about many times before. Do it for, do it for yourself. Become the self-sufficient person that when they come into relationship with somebody else, they add to your life and you add to their life versus they fit something you're missing because you're not missing anything. You may think you are, but that's the trap. Again, self-love is a pivot piece and there's more to it than that. I actually have another, I have something else to put in the comments, which is my, um, which is coming home to yourself, which is a lot more than just self-love. But the thing about it is, if you don't start by loving yourself, none of it really works. Self-love is absolutely, as simple as it sounds, one of the most powerful things you can do for yourself. It doesn't require you to go out and do anything anywhere else. You can do it right at home. 
Um, I recommend in, in my course, I recommend a 30 day practice because it's a, it's a retuning of your frequency and it's a realignment to yourself. Self love works when you work it. Self love will change your life and self love will change everyone around you for the better. One, another reason why is because when you're loving yourself first, hi Steph, and you see this morning at Agape, um, when you are, I can say this, when you're focused on self love, you see other people through a clearer lens too. So your, again, as I mentioned, choices about relationship will shift and change and your relationships with people will change too. But your lenses, your see through will change because you'll be looking from more of your heart than from your head, which is a good thing too, by the way. So I'm really adamant, as you may have guessed, <laughs> and passionate about how self love comes first. However you do that, great. If you want, I recommend my course because I'm biased and I've created over a period of time that will land for you. If it works for you, great, check into it, get it. If you know other practices you do for self-love, which can be, let me give you some other ones you can do besides what I offer. Um, doing self-care practices, and, the, and let me say this way. <laughs> a self-love practice can be a discipline as long as it's not punitive. So if you think self-love for you, um, yeah, I know you couldn't make, well, it was, what to read, what's the, the um, uh, live stream archive for Agape? It was a great service this morning. And I'll see you next week, I'm sure. Back on track. I keep doing that. <laughs> when a sponsor comments on the screen, I tell you go off track of where I was focused on. That's the challenge of being in the masculine. It's single focus. <clears throat> Lens, focus. Oh, yes. Part of self-love can be to do things for yourself that maybe you haven't done before. Maybe you change the things you eat in your diet. Or maybe you do a different exercise routine. Whichever things you do that are self-love centered or intention to help yourself, again, make sure that added it to your life and there's something you want to do out of joy, they're not punitive, as in you don't punish yourself when you don't do it. That's not self-love. If you say to yourself, I'm gonna go and work out every day of the week for the next 30 days, and you don't do it, and you start judging yourself, that's not self-love. If you say, I'm gonna go eat healthier today, or tomorrow, or I'm going to go for a walk today, and you do that, that's building a practice, but it must be a self-supportive practice, meaning not a self-abusive practice. Because when you're punitive and you're saying, oh crap, I didn't do it, and you judge yourself, that's not loving, like, duh. So those sort of things, which I can talk about another time, are different things you can do to support yourself. The self-love meditation I have is a potent daily practice that is easy to do and there's no punishment, because <laughs> that won't work. Okay, I think I've made enough points about self-love to get you started. And again, it will change every relationship around you and everybody around you will be happier because of it, because of the things you won't be de depending upon them for. So um, I think that will summarize my talk. So again, there'll be some links in the comments that I'll put in, which will include the self-love practice and I'll put coming on to yourself and a couple other things too to keep you uh, busy. And this, as always, is my daily Facebook Live. I do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Um, I will put the link in the comments, Sarah. I, 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 was, I didn't do it ahead of time because I've got to finish the broadcast then I can put it in the comments below so it'll be available right after I sign off. So patience, Sarah, you'll be right there. <laughs> um, this is my daily Facebook Live, as I said, on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook and onto YouTube and I'll give you the place you can find those too. So my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. Please like my page and you can find all my archive there. That's pretty much all that's on there now, so you won't, you'll basically scan through all of those. However, my YouTube channel I've discovered, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, please like subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. And those are easy to sort through. You work <laughs> You're working on patience. Okay, 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 I see. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, well, this is part of your self self love practice, there, Sarah. <laughs> is being more patient. <laughs> just breathe, just breathe. Um, <laughs> thank you for that that chuckle, that tickle. Um, so replays. So yes. Yeah, so again, Facebook live on my personal page every day at five pm Pacific time. Replays on my business page, and also on my YouTube channel. Um, I trust this has been a value to you. By the way, all the interaction and comments I've had on here live, if you want to respond after I sign off, feel free to ask any questions, any thoughts, I can respond to you afterwards as well. And again, I will put links in the comments for the self-love practice, um, a couple other things to keep you busy as well. 
So with that, I thank you for watching and thanks for being with me. I am inviting you to take on some sort of self-love practice, whether it's my, dis my meditation or something else, for the benefit of you and all your relationships. And if you're friends of mine, it'll impact me positively too, so I'm selfish. So thank you for watching and thank you for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow at the same time, same channel. Take care of yourself. You deserve the best and honor yourself by taking care of yourself because that way it works. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.